Hello, everybody. Welcome to Three Point Perspective, the podcast about illustration, how to do it, how to make a living at it, and how to make an impact in the world with your art. I'm Jake Parker. I'm Lee White. And I'm Will Terry, and all three of us are professional illustrators. We've all worked for all the major publishers in the business. Together, we've published somewhere around 75 children's books, and we've all taught illustration at university art schools. That's right. Each week, we come at you guys with fantastic illustrator interviews or interesting illustration questions coming from people just like you. Uh, sometimes we agree, sometimes we argue, but each time you learn something, brand spanking new. Brand spanking new. It's I bet the they first. don't learn anything new today. I bet this is the first podcast where they won't learn anything new. you got to have some optimism. There's going to be brand spanking new stuff. Will, today, or this, is, this podcast is dropping the first week of January, so what I wanted to talk oh. about with you guys is what are your – plans for this year like what let's let's go uh in this order what's your vision for the year Mm -hmm. right and then what kind of goals are you going to be setting for that vision and then if you have thought this far ahead Mm -hmm. what's your strategy to like accomplish those goals okay so but my choice is i I need to write that down if i'm going to go in that order you got to say that again what what, what, i will i'll text it to you (laughs) okay so if i go first (laughs) I didn't know I had homework. Then I set the tone for this podcast. Oh, yeah. God. Don't and let Will go that's probably better first. because if I go second after Lee, I'll best him. I don't want to if do If you that. go second after me, you're, it's just going to be like people turning off their <laughs> their iPod. Is that a thing this people don't do anymore? <laughs> this is what Will's, Will's, uh, Will's going to do. I don't know. Just kind of do it like last year. <laughs> That'll be it. Yeah. He's going to get, I think, I think I, it's going to be the, my prediction, Will's going to get really in the weeds. Notes. Will's going to get really oh. in the weeds about Pickleball Paul. <laughs> and he's going to be talking about like, you know, my, my VAT tax on getting the box, the boxes from China and like, right. Yeah. I'm going to fall asleep. <laughs> no, let's hear it. Will. what do you got for us? Okay. The, the coolest thing I think for the three of us is we've worked in illustration long enough to where we've 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 got um, a, a, a certain amount of independence and freedom that a lot of beginners don't have. So I want to, and the reason why I want to say that first is w- my life now as an illustrator is n- not typical to when I started. Right, mm-hmm. I couldn't do a lot of the things that I'm doing now. So with with that in mind, just know that um, like the the goal, my goal. Um, from when I was young was, I mean, when I was first starting in my, in my twenties was I just want to work for clients, right? Mm-hmm. That, that will do it. If I, if I cannot have a real job and just work for someone else and I don't care what I'm drawing, I just want to draw for a living and paint and whatever that got realized really quick in the nineties, right? Mm-hmm. And then it was, then the next dream was, the next vision was, I really want to illustrate children's books. I realized a lot, somewhere yeah. along the way that I didn't want to do editorial work anymore, that I wanted to do um, children's books. And that seemed like a monumental task to accomplish because they just don't give away children's book assignments really easily. But then I accomplished that, you know, mm-hmm. without going into a long, lengthy explanation of how that happened that happened and then i was mm-hmm. a children's book illustrator and that's kind of how i identified myself for a long time and then and, I, and i've documented this on my um youtube channel but because my wife at the time got sick and couldn't teach couldn't work as a school teacher anymore i kind of had to go through this reinvention process of of how do i make even more money than just illustrating children's books and that took that's that that all that um, experimentation actually led to the three of us working together right now in forming mm-hmm. svslearn.com. Um, and SVS has given me an extra income that has allowed me to pursue more indie projects. So mm-hmm. that's my vision for um, 2024 is to continue working on uh, the projects that I'm working on currently, as well as a new project that I haven't talked about yet, 
actually two new projects that I haven't talked about yet. Two new projects? Uh, I know about one new project. Yeah. But I don't know, do I know so, about but, two? The, what, two? And then you said something about, like, how do you accomplish that? Yeah. Well, I, I, so that's your, your vision is is you want to be, like, this is the top tier level vision here, is you want to be an indie creator, publisher type of guy. It's third right? to the top. It's third. What's the top? The top is being a full-time investor and mm -hmm. and painting and drawing whatever I want. Mm. And if it's so if the, it's the for art project, is not for money. The art is for for self fulfillment. And it could be for money, but it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be. It could be whatever mm -hmm. I want to paint when I want to paint it because I have enough money that I don't need to work anymore. Mm -hmm. And I can just do that. So that's that's like the ultimate goal. And, and I really bougie. believe that. You, what's bougie? <laughs> I think that should bougie. be. I think that should be everybody's goal. Um, in in that, why are we here? And what I mean, mm -hmm. like, we all want that, right? We all want to be able to paint whatever we can. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm um, brave enough to just say it and vocalize it. That well, the way yeah, to get there. To, is that, when when you vocalize it, that's like the first step to actually happening. Right. right. And and so um, so investing right now is definitely part of my year it's it's been mm -hmm. it's been part of my life for for a while now and um that's that's yeah that's a that to me that's a necessary we we like to we like to vilify people with money but mm -hmm. we know that like money is life and we all need money to live and so it's like mm -hmm. having more of it i i think the problem comes when you when you make money your god you know when that's all you yeah. care about and you'll do anything to I get it and you'll step on anybody to don't, get it People don't vilify people with money. People vilify people with too much money. <laughs> so <laughs> I saw a, a tweet the other day. It's like, eat the rich, grow up, people. That's not – Jeff Bezos would feed maybe 30, 40 people. No, what we do is we, <laughs> we grind them up and use them as fertilizer, and then we grow crops that can feed maybe 1,000 people. <laughs> wow. So grind the Jake rich. Jake going dark again. <laughs> grind the rich. Um, yeah, grind the rich. So, <laughs> so the the things I'm working on this year are continual continual work on this podcast. Mm -hmm. um, continued work on how to fix your art, which is a program that we run through svslearn.com, mm -hmm. and um, self publishing pro. Working on that, which is our new class that we're working yeah. on this year for for SVS. Continued work on my pickleball pro. Pickleball Paul project, which is my children's book series, and then working on a new project, and it's a game, and I actually have a second game, and then, like I said, investing. And the way that I get there is first my relationship with God and my wife, because if those two things aren't in line, I can't do the other stuff. Mm -hmm. Um intermittent fasting seems to get me it seems to clear my head to where i when i wake up in the morning i can just work instead of like i don't know when i eat breakfast it just throws you it off. Just slows me down it yeah just, it really just slows me down um exercise and um a good healthy dose of prayer and service and and my wife and I we serve in our church as the activities committee people. Uh -huh. So we we run like parties and fun fun events and different events at, yeah. at our church. So there we go. So that's going to be so my you're doing my like 2024. A... God, that was such a meandering answer. I still don't even know what you said. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did you say anything concrete? I'm gonna I'm gonna eat some food because I got to eat every day. <laughs> no, Will's Will's going. So he's going hard. He's going hard on full work life balance here, where uh -huh. he's got like I want to get the work stuff accomplished, but in order to do that, I've got to have my life like in balance. I got to be focusing on. Well, these you've been good at that. that. You've been good at that in the in the past, anyway. So the the takeaway is what you're actually going to do for what people care about on this podcast is games. You're going to make some games. Is that right? That's true. 
Yeah. So outside of the that, and so outside of the normal, um, the normal Will Terry stuff. So essentially, you're saying it's working for me. Life is working for me. How it's been, how it's been going, and mm-hmm. now you're ready to add in these two new projects, which are, which are, which you can't talk about just yet, right? Or you don't want to talk about just yet. But essentially, yeah. they're you're dipping your toe into into uh, into games, right? Yes. Cool. Which Very will, interesting. The first one will launch sometime in the early summer. Yeah. I'm excited for that one. I'm excited to get my play test. Yeah. When are you sending us a play test? I'll be sending them pretty soon. I I, I think I am going to spring and do prototypes instead of like sending you guys like a, I ordered these, um, these cards from Amazon over the weekend and Mm -hmm. that you draw. I ordered the same uh, cards. I have the same deck. Oh, do you? Yeah. The thing yeah. is, and I've used They're them good. before. Um, I feel like, I feel like when people test the game, they need the experience of the art as well. And the art uh-huh. is to a point where the 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 first draft is almost done. So I think I'm uh-huh. going to really try to find a place that will help me make. It. I mean, even if I have to pay for twenty five of them, I would do that. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Like what? Whatever the minimum. I've- Right. So. And and you want to do that just because um, you don't want to have any sort of friction between the gameplay and and like the the level of like in, enjoyment and engagement that those people have, because right. sometimes they can it could, you know, if, if a key part of the game is it's you're you're partly telling a story, it's a little bit of the art that's happening and if that's taken out of it then it's just essentially they're doing math <laughs> let's just let's just play math you right. know that's like that's what uno is if you take away you know the fun colors the pretty colors and whatnot <laughs> um, right or or even right. like monopoly deal you know if you take away like that we're buying and selling property it's just like here's plus five all right well i'm going to charge you negative five you know right. what's, what's you could what's do that average? with D everything could just be numbers and you could just talk numbers instead of the story part mm-hmm. of it <laughs> mm-hmm. so okay so that was will i want to hear from you lee what do you got for us i am going to play test will's game and i'm going to launch in one month early <laughs> earlier than he is she's going to take it with different art <laughs> no my new my new game is based on uno it's called dose <laughs> You just say <laughs> well, I came up with a game called Trace. You have to yell Trace when you got three three cards left. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough of the, <laughs> enough of these jokes. Um, uh, it, this is going to be a big year. I'm I'm super excited um, for this year because I feel like I'm finally understanding what I want to do, and that is, I just want to make. I, I like making really pretty images and that's what I want to mm-hmm. focus on is, is how, what projects are going to get me there without having to try to anticipate the market so much. I guess I was, I was working with an agent last year and dealing with all oh, what the publishing company industry wants and all that. I really found that I didn't like that kind of thinking like, Oh, the publishing industry loves nonfiction. So now I need to illustrate a nonfiction book. I just don't think that way and I hate it. And so mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm definitely going to move forward finishing my tarot deck, which I absolutely loved making. It was a lot of work, but now I kind of understand how it all works. So next year, my tarot, full tarot deck is going to be done. That's going to launch probably in early fall because just mm-hmm. I have so many cards to make, so it's going to take a while. In the meantime, I've got a children's book that I am very excited about, um, and I've got, I've got a pitch document. I've got some sample images, and I'm making the dummy. So I'm dividing my I, next year I thought year that was a middle grade. <laughs> they tried to make it into a middle grade. The publishing industry wants middle grade, so it's got to be middle grade. Um, no, so I, I'm excited about this children's book. And uh, so I've divided my year into quarters. And this is the first time I'm really focusing on what deliverable do I want to have every three months. And i got to say, it is a great way to mm-hmm. organize your life because three months is long enough away where you don't feel stressed. Like, what am I doing today? Oh, I got to get something done. But it's near enough to where it doesn't feel like you can lollygag around and, and mess around. And it just gives these kind of, and it, and it matches up with the 
with when you've got to pay taxes and all that stuff as a business. And so thinking in terms of quarter, I've never done it before, but so Q1, I want to have my dummy for the children's book done and then have, I'm trying to do one tarot card a week. And so that mm-hmm. should be 16 cards, I think. Um, oh no, no, 12, 12 cards will be done at that at Q1. So March for by, uh, January, uh, uh, into March. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I go full into the, uh, tarot deck and that launches Q3 and into Q3. And then Q4, I am getting more into stationary. I've loved making, I started making more cards and making patterns and just kind of kicking the tires on that industry. Um, and I found that I really like it. It's decorative. It doesn't require a ton of story. Like, you know, when we're writing a story, a kid's book or making mm-hmm. a game like Will is, it's mental gymnastics. Okay. If this happens, mm-hmm. then what happens mm-hmm. next? It's hard. It's rewarding because of that difficulty, I think. Right. But to balance out that kind of stuff, the stationary, the the patterns and things like that is it's awesome because you're just like, okay, I need a I need a Christmas pattern and, and it's it's more decorative and surface based. And so I want to dive a little more into that licensing stuff Q four. Um mm-hmm. so that's sort of my year. I should have the tarot deck, I should have a new children's book, and I should have uh some kind of stationary um, products and business. Cool. This is going to be good. This is going to be a good episode to review at the, in December. I'm scared. I almost year. wanted to pull my punches a little bit cause I don't want to promise too much. And then next year I'm like, yeah. well, I got busy. I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I like that. I like, cause you did. I mean, uh, essentially here's your vision. You know, the vision is create pretty images. And so you could look at your day and 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 that's what you you can come back to like look look at what you're doing today does this does this what i'm doing today meet that vision you know is it going to add up right. to, to me accomplishing that vision and mm-hmm. if it's like well i have to do some administrative stuff you know there's a bunch of emails that need to go out i got to contact this printer you could still tell yourself this is contributing to this vision because that stuff has to get done it's it's not yeah. necessarily painting every single day, right? Well, let me speak to that because I'm, I'm actually glad you brought that up because I am mm-hmm. on a different schedule right now mm-hmm. in order. I realized I'm not happy unless I am creating. Mm-hmm. And the weird thing about being a, a pro like the three of us are for as long as we've been, there's so much admin that comes with it that some weeks I'm not painting or drawing. That's all Literally. I've done this week. That's all I've done this it's, week is, there's, is it's emails. Crazy. No, I've come to the conclusion that there's no way for an artist to make really good money and just paint. You can't. They, you can't. But I realized, so that, that was my problem that I needed to solve is like, how do I bring art into my daily life? And so the uh-huh. way that I solved it is I begin getting up at 5 a.m. again. And that mm-hmm. is a game changer because nobody else is up. I, I, there's nothing to do. I mean, it's easy to get in the office and, and, and my studio and be like, oh, I guess I'll start by checking my email. Oh, I need to email this. Yeah, and yeah. then all of a sudden I'm in admin mode and I just mm-hmm. turn that whole thing off. I don't check my emails or do anything except for on uh, Wednesday when we record this podcast. It's the one exception. But from 5 to about 9 or 9.30, I'm making art. And that's it. That that is my block, and I'm not doing admin. I won't do it. That's a Dolly Parton song. Working nine five to, to five. nine. <laughs> 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 no, but but it's weird because once you draw the, uh, I can only hear this phrase by the way as lion in the sand because I I said line in the sand to my wife, and mm-hmm. she's like, "What's a lion in the sand?" <laughs> 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 so now I just think That's about hilarious. a lion in the sand. When you, but when Maybe you there's a children's book, book in that. But yeah. but once I carved out the time and I said, nope, that block is a creative block only and nothing else can enter. I won't let it. And all of a sudden the day sort of shifted to where that's how it works now. It's right. weird. You just sort of – like before I would have said, I can't do it. I've got too much admin. Mm-hmm. But the second I carved out the time and labeled it as creative, mm-hmm. that's what it became. And it has to be then because you're not even tempted to check email. You're not nope. tempted to text anybody. Don't have anybody you know. demanding my time yet. And, and it's, it's awesome because by, just think about this, from five to nine, by the time I'm done with that, I've done four hours of creative stuff, which is a, more than enough for the most yeah. part. I'm a pretty fast painter and drawer anyway. And it's only 9 a.m. 
I still have the entire day. I could do whatever somebody needs. If I got to go to a meeting or if we mm-hmm. have something to do for SVS or whatever, it's amazing how much time you actually have if you well, organize in that way. Now that I know that, when I see you first thing, I'm going to be like, what'd you make this morning? Keep, Don't keep ask me that. It. I slept in today. <laughs> 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 but that's the bar. That, that's the goal. Is I, wanna mm-hmm. ma- I do want to make something every day, even if I don't finish the painting, even if I just get some thumbnail sketches. Um, and part of that, by the way, the little asterisk is, it's 50-50, digital art and traditional art. I want to go way back into um, traditional art. The, 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 if I hit all my goals and I have a little bit extra time, I want to put together a watercolor class just because AI is coming so hard for us. I feel like there's going to be a resurgence of traditional work. And so mm-hmm. Q4, I am going to be making a traditional watercolor class, a basics class, because I've never seen a watercolor class that's done well. So um, what, okay. would you, what would you do if you, you're taking, you know, you're giving your watercolor class and there's like a robot taking it? There's a robot taking it. Let's let's see how they lay down a nice wash. I don't I don't yeah. discriminate. As long as they pay for the class, <laughs> he's okay with that. <laughs> That's right. Have you seen the the robots no. playing ping pong? Yes, that's why it's got to be. That's 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 um fake, right? That's like no. If it is real, does that mean I don't I don't have to play ping pong it's anymore? Not, it can't be real. Like, the, the hey, you want to play ping pong and be like robots do it. <laughs> well, that's like the that's like the Bruce Lee clip where he's playing ping pong with the nunchucks, right? That's right, not right. real. So that's not real. But th- that thinking, though, I've I have gotten emails and messages from uh, amateur artists or people thinking of doing art as a career, and they're like, "Well, if the robots can do it, should I should I just give up and quit? And like, should I just look into do something else?" And he, I kind of feel like. Uh, Maybe, maybe, it, maybe you will be losing out on some work from AI prompt generator people who are doing that kind of stuff. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't quit doing art, and and you should still, if if that's like a a, a thing that that light you know livens you and and gets you up out of bed in the morning. Please keep digging into it, keep doing it because you might get pretty good at it if you keep doing it, and you might make something that the AI can't make and uh, and people might be searching for your particular voice and your particular work in something mm-hmm. going back to your that was my little AI soapbox but going back nice. to your Q4 you're focusing on you, you want to make a watercolor class but you also want to do the, the stationary are, are those connected like they the are yeah I'm gonna use them as the, demos okay. for what to make and how to how to make it mm. this is good so that I like that. That's some some strategy right there, like uh, double dipping on the artwork. Double and, dip. And what about your Patreon? Are you going to keep going with your Patreon? I am because I, I realize here's the weird, the other weird thing about the publishing industry. <laughs> keep bagging on the publishing industry, <laughs> but they they don't want you to share anything until it's done, and then you're like, hey, look, I made a book and it's for sale on Amazon, and here it is. And I just don't agree with that philosophy either. I'm because I now have these very, very clear things that are deliverables, I'm just bringing everybody on with me mm-hmm. and I'm going to show them the whole process. Like, yeah. here's how, here's how I made it. Here's what went wrong. And, and that's what I've been doing lately on the, on the Patreon anyway. It's just I'm saying, no, here's I'm what really I'm doing right. and here's how, here's how it's going. And, you know, I ran into this problem and here's how I solved it. And so, um, it's a perfect place for me to sort of just, you know, diary, um, the life of an artist. And if people yeah. are interested in that, I hope, I hope they, Hope they join me. The Lee White Patreon. If you if you guys is it what patreon.com slash Lee White Illo mm-hmm. or something like that? Yep. No, it's just I, Lee White. I the, I I told you guys a couple of weeks ago, I think it was last month, where I realized how long I've been doing Patreon. It's nine and a half years I've been wow. doing I've had a Patreon going. <laughs> I think I turned it off for uh for a year once or something like that or a few months but i added up all my earnings over those nine and a half years it was it's forty four thousand dollars that i've made from patreon in a in a decade which you know if you spread that over a decade it's not it's not a whole lot of money dripping in at, at once but that adds up 
like that has paid some bills for me. It did and, 44,000. That's not chump change. Right. It makes me wish I just stuck it all in a high interest, you know, uh, investment account Bitcoin. or something like that. Bitcoin that Bitcoin, baby. Bitcoin, like, I beat you to it, Lee. Beat you to I it. I should have, but. Do you know they asked these, I saw this video where they asked these, these uh, people, would you rather have $100 or a Bitcoin right now? And, and now, of course, they cherry pick, right? Because they're yeah. only going to put me. But there was a ton of people who said $100, which is well, so weird but, to me how. But right now you could say, would you, what's Bitcoin at? 40000 And it was, this would was last week. Would you rather have 40000 Oh, really? Yeah, this was last week when they did it. It was last week, and then people picked $100 over People over are unaware of what's going on. Oh, geez. You know. Okay, I, that's too off topic. I went back to Patreon. <laughs> the thing, though, the thing, though, that I wanted to say... <laughs> You gotta be. You gotta watch these guys like hawks because they will steer the conversation <laughs> to to pickleball or disc golf or wherever. Uh, no, the thing with Patreon that I that I noticed that I love about it too is it is a creative diary. Uh, I didn't even think about that going into it, but you you've actually used it as creative p- proof that you made something that someone accused you of, of not making. We won't get into too many details of that, but yeah. Well, but, let me just say that. Yeah. Because I, I had documented a process and somebody questioned when I made something, whether something was new or not. And I had the whole thing documented on mm-hmm. Patreon. So I was able to pull up those posts and say, check it out. I mean, I, th- I think in the age of AI and that's why I'm recording demo uh, videos on Instagram too. Mm-hmm. I want people to see me actually painting these things mm-hmm. uh, because people are going to start questioning it. I mean, I get people, there was one comment somebody had on one that I just posted an image and the girl said, Oh, I thought this was AI. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Nope. If you go back one day, it shows me painting that image. <laughs> right. One day. Nobody has time for that. Nobody, nobody yeah, knows right. how to, click back and look at someone's profile. But you're going to so, have to de- you're going to have to defend yourself at some mm-hmm. point with creation. Whether it's somebody accusing you of AI, whether it's somebody accusing you of uh, uh stealing an image from them, like Will was talking about earlier, this happened a while back, but somebody accused mm-hmm. him and he had to show his process and that's how he proved him- himself. And so I'm just saying that documenting your process if you are a working artist now is it's never been more important for all mm-hmm. these different reasons and people mm-hmm. like to see it i like to see it so yeah. yeah so that that's you know going back going back to to patreon too it's it, in an age where you know social media is where artists predominantly post their work it's really cool to go back and look through my patreon and see like process uh, of of how stuff was made see where my head was at because each post isn't just me like here's the artwork but here's my thinking behind it Mm -hmm. i'm posting you know strategies for the year and or strategies for certain projects i'm posting how a kickstarter uh did and and what went wrong and what went right and all that stuff and so it's it's you know i'm i'm actually quite like happy and proud with it and it's not something like i've never had more than 150 people support me in a month right and so it's not a huge i've one month I made a thousand dollars in that month. The rest of it's been, been between five hundred and seven or eight hundred dollars, right? So it's it's not a it's a I, I'm not going to say no to that. And I and I put in a you know maybe an hour a week into just uh, grabbing everything that I've posted or that I've made and, and kind of posting it there. So that's I guess uh, I just wanted to go down that Patreon rabbit hole and just remind people that that is an option. It is something available for people. We should help encourage people, whether it's supporting us or, or supporting other artists. It's so cheap. I mean, my, my argument that I was making to, to Will and Jake a week or two ago was drinks at a juice bar are now like 14 bucks. If you go get like a carrot juice infused with <laughs> yeah. cilantro, yeah. know, it's like 14 bucks. My Patreon is $8 and I feel guilty for charging and I'm showing everything I'm making. Can you imagine if I was in college and some artists, working artists had that Mm -hmm. for $8? And I felt bad. Yep. Well, Jake, Jake is like, oh, you can charge eight. I don't know, I'll charge six. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. You're, I'm thinking you're, about charging twenty, um, because you're like evolution. It's just weird Cause, that cause, the value of evolution tells us to eat something every day. You know, to put something in well, our mouth. 
this is a se- sort of a separate topic, but I, I do want to cover a little bit more about the devaluing of artists and mm-hmm. the devaluing of what we do. I mean, and, and that's again, again, it's a longer other topic, but when you start questioning, oh, should I give this artist eight dollars a month? Oh, mm-hmm. no, but I'll go buy this frappuccino for twelve. Yeah, I don't which one are twice. you getting more out of? And like the contracts for illustrators are not getting better; they're getting worse, and the budgets aren't getting better; they're getting worse. And so, I do want to bring that into our discussions more: the devaluing of art and what we do about it. You know, AI is probably going to further that a little bit too. And so, it's it's just a discussion that's on my mind and. Uh, how do we get around it? How do we deal with that mm-hmm. in, the, in, the, in the new world? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's something definitely on my mind, but go too. Sub- my, my, my takeaway from that is go support somebody, preferably go one of us somebody. three, but <laughs> go support and, an artist. And I would say, too, there's, you know, how do, we, how do we give or how do we have a healthy middle class for art, for creators, essentially? Because right now it's, you do it, because it's a passion and it's not enough to pay the bills. And then there's maybe a window there where you're making okay money at it. Um, but then there's like a select handful of people who, who ship arrives and they just skyrocket into the stratosphere. And now they're making half a million a year, you know, making, you know, two children's books a year and, or, or doing, you know, one graphic novel a year or something like that. Um, and so, one of my things that I've been thinking about a lot lately is how do you have like a healthy middle class for artists? And I mean, by that, I mean, an artist can support themselves, support maybe a family, have enough money to save for retirement, have enough money to pay for, you know, living, food, um, uh, new clothes if they need it. Right. And, uh, and maybe go on a vacation once a year or something like that, like a, right. a healthy middle class thing. And you know, I've been able to do that. And but it's a grind. It's 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 hard. But but I've been able to do that. But I meet so many people that just have a hard time getting there. Mm-hmm. And uh, and and then I know there's like the, you know, I know maybe I could count on 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 one hand the people that I know who are who have who've been launched into that stratosphere stratosphere and are making the the half a million to a million dollars a year doing you know doing their artwork and you know the healthy middle class has a way for people to go from the the lowest you know the low, lower class to a middle class there's there's way for them to 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 find their way there and there's a way for some of the success from the upper class to be available to to that to that middle class somehow so i don't know that's that's sort of part and parcel from from what we're kind of the road we're going down here yeah i don't want to i don't want people like give up on this dream of making art for a living because i do it is possible Mm -hmm. and maybe that's our mission if if anything's our mission here at svs learn is to show you how that can be possible Mm -hmm. if some of you make it to the stratosphere awesome please give us a shout out once you're up there (laughs) You know, but, but for the most part, what our mission I think is, is to help you go from art to hobby, you know, arts, this thing I do on a weekend to no, this is something that's actually paying my bills and, and can pay my mortgage payment. Yep. Um, should I go next? You're the only one left. You have to go. Next. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you want to skip me or <laughs> you can yeah, take what us you out. Got going? Take, go ahead. And take yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> take take it take us out. I'll just be chatting for the next hour and a half. No, I'll keep it I'll keep it sweet and short. Vision for me this year is somewhat in the same with with Lee in in that I want to make images. I want to I want to be the I want to focus on the creator side and have the admin side not be such a uh such a heavy load, right? So so the vision would be by the end of the year to have some sort of um, project that I've completed that is, uh, whether it's a graphic novel or, um, or a, a, another Kickstarter project like, like I've done, to have that done by the end of the year. Now, I am, I've been working hard on trying to get land a graphic novel deal, and 
I think I'm maybe a month away from that coming into mm. like for that really getting nailed down. So if that happens, um, you saying that, a month away from getting it sold or getting it ready to be possibly no, sold, getting it sold, like oh, wow, sign cool. a contract for that. I, th- I think you, we're that close. Talk about, I, I hope so. Can you, can you talk about what publisher? Um, I don't want to go anywhere near that right now, but it's a pub- okay. I'll just say it's a publisher I've worked with in the past. So that, that limits the limits, the options. But, um, um, the thing is, is if that deal comes into play, that changes my year. Now I'm just working on that. And so I have like these two visions. One vision is let's, let's get that deal and let's work on that and divide my time between that project and doing the podcast, doing the SVS, uh, how to fix your art, all the stuff that we do with the SVS. The other vision is, is that deal falls through for whatever reason, then I, you know, I have a, an, an online shop that I could give all the attention in the world to and turn that into more of a, a thriving business instead of just like an afterthought, which sometimes it is like, oh yeah, go, go order something from my shop, but <laughs> intentionally make things for the shop would be like the, 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 other, the other side of that coin. And then launch my Kickstarter, my summer Kickstarter, which um, I have an idea for game two, Will. I don't know if I can get it ready in time. And if mm. I can't, then it, I'm going to do another, um, probably another book project, kind of like what I've done in the past. So, Will your game be fun? Uh, no, no, it's going to be more of a slog. <laughs> <laughs> it's called tax time, where you just do some taxes. <laughs> tax time. Okay, everybody, get out your forms. Make sure you have a 1099 filled out. <laughs> Coming this April. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's it. And then, it, it, you know, uh, we talked a little bit about scheduling in, in the day, and I've been shifting my, I've been getting up and starting work at five as well. I don't, I can't work until nine because I cut out at six to kind of get the kids up and help make breakfast and whatever. Um, but I do get a, an hour chunk, and it's amazing what that hour chunk, what can happen in that hour when it, when you just sit down and start working. Um, and so I'm going to, I'm going to continue with that. And, uh, and then, um, my, my whole thing is I try to do creative stuff in the mornings, get, get back to work at nine o'clock in the morning and work until noon on creative stuff. And then the afternoons is preparing, you know, admin stuff, emails, uh, phone calls, preparing lessons, that kind of stuff. And, um, and that's where I see this, uh, how this year playing out plays out cool ambitious i hope you get the de- i hope you get the deal i wish we could know more about it yeah yeah and w- when that deal happens if it does happen um i will do an entire episode start to finish what's can you tell us is the, <laughs> is the main character a fox robot no. robot <laughs> no no actually if you've if you are have been on my patreon um, you've seen my whole pitch development proposal process start to finish on there. So uh, I should probably do one more follow-up post on just like the last little finishing touches I did on it. But, but yeah, that's, hey, can we, can we say if you made it this far in the podcast, post a little icon, if you're watching on YouTube of uh, a robot head, don't they still have the robot head? Yeah, let's do the robot head. That's a good robot one. head. All right, so that's our plans for for the next year. Should we? We probably have time to do that one question. I sent I sent three, but let's just do that first one and okay. then call it good. Does that sound good? Sounds okay. Good. This question comes in from Stephanie, and she her subject line is trying to find answers like a headless chicken. Please help. And so her question boiled down to she you know there's like a five paragraph es- essay she sent us, and I I didn't send it to the guys. I just kind of. Um, boiled it down to bullet points. But the question at the end of the day was, when it comes to being a fantasy artist, especially if you're an independent artist, in your opinion, is it still vital for you to pick one type of fantasy subject to be known for? So in sense, do you, do you niche to get riche, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and just to give you a little context with what she's dealing with here, she has um, repetitive strain, strain injury in her hands, 
and through physical therapy, she's been able to um, uh, work through that. So where she can she can draw for a few hours at a time without pain, but eventually it, it shows up. And so because of that, she doesn't think that she could get a full time job doing com- commercial work or you know a job at a studio or something like that. Uh, but in, in, instead would rather have sort of like set up a way that she can get um, um, an income stream that doesn't require her to be working all day. So selling prints, having an online shop, licensing artwork, stuff like that. She wants to be an independent artist with shop and a merch and things like that. And so her dream project would be to create fun fantasy comics to do a graphic novel. Um, but she doesn't know if she should really niche down to do that or if she should go more broad with it. Like, what's her path to success? Let's, let's talk about what... So she's already niched a little bit, so she's mm-hmm. double niching to mm-hmm. get double reaching. Um, yes. <laughs> so the, the fantasy is the kind of the big... big Is it niche or niche? It's niche, right? It's niche. It's both. It's niche <laughs> if you want to sound pretentious <laughs> it's niche if you want to sound like you know, a little bougie dude. um yeah. okay so so fantasy is the niche um is there a, i don't know what another niche inside that niche is can we talk okay, about so, yeah so like um i would say fantasy is a genre and then you have high fantasy you have like like you have harry potter which is fantasy but you mm-hmm. also have lord of the rings which mm-hmm. is fantasy and then you also have War of Warcraft, like World of Warcraft, which is also fantasy. But right? I guess if, so, if, if one artist, say, did three little graphic novels and all three of those things that you just listed didn't exist, mm-hmm. somebody made that version of them, would I think to myself, oh my gosh, I can't believe this artist who did Harry Potter is doing Lord of the Rings or d d um, Like, I, I, it seems still sort right. of part of the same world to me. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't compartmentalize those three things. The fans are mm-hmm. different, though. That's the thing. So yeah. The, so the, so the, yeah. it wouldn't be a problem for the artist to do those other things. It's just that if you're trying to market to the same people. In, a, in right. other words, like, okay, so I'm, 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 I'm doing a fantasy novel about, a graphic novel about dragons. Now, all of mm-hmm. my stuff has to be about dragons, so I live in that same world, or what? Right. So, yeah. So her question is, do I have to now just be the dragon artist? Like, like I say, nay, that seems mm-hmm. so boring. You don't yeah, have to, I, but you don't have to. And it, and it would, it could become boring, but there's two, I mean, it's apples and oranges. It's like, if you want to market to the same list, the same email list, you want to, you want to be feeding them the same stuff. If mm-hmm. you want creative freedom, then you make that a less of a priority and you develop another list. And so there will be some I still, I still disagree. I still disagree about the list because if you have a follower, I agree with you, but when it's such a big entity, like, like the st- people of Star War- that like Star Wars don't like Star Trek and vice versa or whatever. <laughs> and those lists are so specific because the project's already so big. But if I was somebody who just was doing space fantasy, it fits both of those realms. And that's the same is true for D and D and and uh, Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter. Those are such big entities that there would be a divide. Hey, I'm a Harry Potter fan. Anything mm-hmm. J.K. Rowling comes out with, I'm gonna buy. But mm-hmm. you know, forget those big names. Now, just have the independent artist who's creating. Oh, she created a world of magic, and then in the next book, she created a world of magic with some dragons there. Nobody that would be the same list. Yes and no. Yeah, I mean, like right. in your analogy of the of the space thing, there's a lot of people that like Star Trek and Star Wars. So right, that's my in point. That sense, it crosses over. Right, but I don't think there's anybody in that group who doesn't like space. Is my point. Mm-hmm. Like, if you did a space novel, that like it, it's not going to be one group likes your work and the other doesn't because you you don't have that big of a project yet once you have a giant project like jk rowling does she has to worry about this issue right and that's that's this is like my plan for her as i was thinking about this thinking about her and and sort of bullet pointing what she's you know what she was saying here i was thinking what she needs to do is is like a, a a great project idea for someone would be to by this time next year, have a calendar ready to sell, okay? 
what you need to do for that is create 12 really beautiful images that, uh, that meet one particular genre, right? And so if you were wanting to sell a ca calendar, what would you, if it's a fantasy calendar, what's going to do better? A general fantasy broad range calendar. We've got some wizards here. We've got some uh, fairies over here. We've got mermaids over here. Or what would do better? The mermaid calendar, the dragon calendar, you know, the troll calendar, right? So I think that's that's what she's she's talking about. Like, if you want to sell a project like that, it really does have to be a niche sort of thing. So what I would do, what I would say is, this next year is set a goal to once a month do, pick one of these genres, let's just say dragons, do a dragon illustration once a month, sell a print for it once a month, collect all those prints into a calendar at the end of the year. Now you have prints in your shop and you have a calendar that you could maybe sell a hundred of because it's a hot item to be selling people in November, right? Um, I still, and then, I still argue, and though, then repeat it next year. Um, do pick another fantasy thing next year, and what happens is this sort of compounds, compounds over the over the years. Where now you've got twelve dragon drawings, you've got twelve uh, mermaid illustrations, you've got twelve like Lord of the Rings style things going on, and then you really do have like a wealth of of stuff to have in your shop, but also um, a portfolio that can maybe land you some other really cool work and whatnot. Yeah, I agree. But I, I disagree with the term that those, that's not a genre change that's under fantasy. And all you did is change subjects. All, they all belong to fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. It's all fantasy, but her, her question is, you know, how, right. yeah. Focus how on the subject how matter. How niche down do it. I need to go? Right, right, right. She needs to make projects. Like we always talk about mm -hmm. here. Like it needs to be, there needs to be a theme it can't be random, like space one week and then dragons the next week. That would be disjointed and feel a little right. off brand. But right. if you start, like Jake said, kind of group them together. This is my dragons series. This is my mermaid series, my wizards. Those are all under the same banner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I think, too, like, you know, she says she wants to do comics. She would, she would love to do a graphic novel at some point. I think you start there by doing, putting out online little five page little ten page vignette stories something that um, something that's just going to get people to stop read something cool you know be uh, you know laugh or be scared of something and sort of build up your ability to create comics by doing these short stories and then you get known as like a witty or an interesting or a profound storyteller right and once you have a body of 10, 20 of these short comics, now you have a book that you could sell. It's, it's your own anthology, okay, that you've just slowly built up over over a couple of years, right? Um, and you have a fan base who already love these stories, and they're going to want to buy the book because they've only read them online, and they want to have like a little artifact that represents like their fandom for you. And then if that works, if there's like one story in particular that's like really impactful and they love the character, then go make the graphic novel for that. Right. And and have that be your thing, too. But I think in between all of that, make a cool finished illustration, post a print of that, you know, if you want to get that shop going and uh, and start start doing that. But you're going to have to chip away at this little by little. And I would and I would I add to that if, if you if she's going that route, pay attention to what the what the audience says, too, because maybe maybe you will notice like, wow, every time I post a dragon, there's an uptick. Uh, in in engagement or people likes or whatever like that, and then you can kind of read your read your market. So that's you know what you're trying to learn is what do you like to do? What does your audience like you to do? When how will they follow you? And what's the best route for them to follow you? And I will add, you never want to create things just for the audience. You should satisfy yourself too, but do pay attention to what they how the react what the reaction is. Cool. Um. The other thing I want to point out too is is you you're worried about your repetitive stress injury, right? And you're worried that commercial work would, you know, put too much pressure on you. I don't know that going this path as an independent artist means you're going to be drawing any less than if you had a day job. In fact, you might be drawing more. So, cuz I know when I when I've had the day job, there's times where production is just halted. And you're in a holding pattern 
And there might be a week where you don't have to draw at all. Mm-hmm. But that that if there's a week where you're not drawing at all as an independent artist, that's a week of art that is never going to be made, right? And never going to be able to be monetized. And it's a week behind on your project that you're already supposed to be working on. And so sometimes, you know, you, you, you get what you wish for. You, you want to be an independent artist, but you might end up be working 80 hours a week instead of 40 hours a week that you would at a, at a day job. But it's 80 hours a week on stuff that you love to do and that you want to do. So, you know, take that as your, and 80 is extreme. I would say more like 50 or 60. <laughs> I would add to the repetitive strain thing. I mean, we've talked about um, exercises and, and, and devices that can help that stuff. But the biggest advice that I am taking from people having repetitive strain and, and, and my own activities and drawing and stuff is it is not, I know I'm going to get some blowback on this, but it is not out of the realm to learn to draw and paint with the off hand. Um, I'm training myself right now to learn to draw with my left hand. I'm not left-handed. I'm not ambidextrous. But my, the question I ask you, is your skill in your hand or is it in how you think? And it's I think it, think. it, it is more you? how you think. And so you can become ambidextrous without as much effort as you think. Are you worried that you're going to lose your right arm in the sword play that you do in the park on the weekend? Uh, I, I worry that I worry that it's too off balance. I'm, I'm playing disc golf all the time, all right-handed. I'm drawing and painting all right-handed. And I thought to myself, you know, I'm just going to balance this out. I started doing uh, uh, practice swings when I'm at the disc golf course with disc just when I'm warming up with my left hand. And I was like, you know, that's not so bad. And then I thought, oh, man, I can actually – start to improve this. So I started brushing my teeth left-handed and now I've started to make these clumsy little drawings. I'm, I'm not good with the offhand, mm-hmm. but it's interesting to, to make marks with the other hand. And if, if I had a problem like this artist does where I'm like, I can't draw and paint because I'm limited physically with my right hand, I would be all in on the left hand, mm-hmm. like an it's- hour a day line exercises. You'll be ambidextrous in a month. I guarantee it. That's crazy because I was pretty sure you're already doing your left hand for most of your art. It looks like that. <laughs> I draw it with my feet. <laughs> so what about this? this as a thought experiment, okay? You're, mm-hmm. You can't, maybe you don't, you can't use either arm. I know that we're mm-hmm. all against AI art. We, 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 for all the reasons mm-hmm. we've listed before. But oh, in man. that case, would it oh, be okay man. to use AI if you couldn't draw? With your hand, no. as long as long as you don't sell it as something that it's not, right, right. Well, right. The big problem with AI is it's still uh, not ethically sourced. Um, right. That's what I was. That's uh, what I was. Data. I want farm raised AI. I want farm raised <laughs> AI. I want those free range drawings. <laughs> Never spent a day in a cage. <laughs> uh, no, because that that's a, that's a big problem that everybody has is 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 it, you'll never be able to extract the ai is so far down that you'll never be able to extract the cream from the coffee right like mm-hmm. it's just based on stolen data mm-hmm. and what you know so the question is is like i mean we're all living our lives based on stolen and and uh un you know, ambiguously like claimed stuff, you know, the land you're living on right now wasn't originally yours, right? You know, the, the phone that you have in your pocket is made from material that was mined by people who were essentially slaves, right? So bumming me out, man. I know. So (laughs) where does it stop and how can you live a hundred percent ethical life? And a lot of people say, and that's why I love having, open conversations about it because I'm a realist and I like to break things, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And my theory, and I hope this doesn't depress people too much, but my theory is the people that win in the illustration world are, are, are twofold. They're the people that create the product themselves, which is what I'm trying to do, right? Mm-hmm. So you, it's your idea, you create the product, and however you get there, whether it's your own art, whether you hire someone else to do it, or whether you're using AI, you're taking something directly to market and winning. The other is the person who learns how to use AI, AI art and covers their digital tracks. 
It's like Lee, mm-hmm. like like you you know you say, well, you better be able to have the the um, the work to back up. But what about the person who's using AI to basically do the drawing and the and the the concepting, but then is drawing from that, and they can show all their original drawings. But what they're looking at to get there is AI art. I have no problem with that. That's no di- no different to me than looking at Pinterest or anything else. Yeah. Okay. That that's fine with me. But the the second that um, something that was button clicked made and then sent to a publisher and it's on right. a book cover and you got five thousand dollars for that cover, I'm start. I'll take issue with that one. Yep. You know. Do you, I don't know if that. Did, did I tell oh. you guys that that I have this Facebook group that I started for um, children's books and. Um, it was a relative of mine that posted that, that wants to be a writer is trying to be a writer and she mm-hmm. wrote a book and she 1-800 dialed up some AI cover art <laughs> mm-hmm. and posted it in there and like everyone in there was the, the comments were on everyone else's stuff whenever somebody posted their book was like great job you know love it love this mm-hmm. love that whatever hers was total crickets and and then she messaged huh. and, you know, we messaged back and forth and it was like, I don't understand what why gives? no one's commenting on mine. And I'm like, actually, I just saw it and I'm going to ask you to take it down because, Ooh. because, and she's really hurt, you know? And I said, here's the thing you got to know in the illustration community. And I'm not taking a side. I'm not saying whether this is right or wrong. I'm telling you reality. Reality is you're posting that in a group where people have worked for years, sometimes decades, a lot of them decades Mm -hmm. to get where they're at Mm -hmm. and you pushed a button and they're offended. And that's why they're not that someone eventually will say something that will, um, if you keep posting, will really offend you, you know, will really, (laughs) but you have to know that where, what, from the illustrator standpoint, you you jumped in the front of the line. You know, we've all been working really hard in line and you just ran to the front and you're like, what's wrong with that? That's what your question is. Yeah. Like, I don't understand what's wrong with it. It's like, what's wrong with it is, according to them, you jump in the front without doing anything. So what'd she say to that? what'd she yeah, say what'd to she that? say? She just went away. I mean, she's hurt. <laughs> Called her out. You know, she's like, well, I mean, she's well, hurt. She, she wanted with that. something. Huh? You can't argue with with what you said. You know, some people are run by their emotions, and I think she's one of them. Yeah. You know, and to her credit, I, I, you know, I, let me take that back. I don't know exactly where she's at right now, so I shouldn't speculate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the, maybe there's some introspection, but yeah, I think you're right. Like the point is to post it honestly, and and. And you could say, this is what I would want to be going for with the illustration. This is a concept piece. I've just used AI as a concept. And then go back in and like make the thing yourself, right? Like make your version of it. I think that's what people are really going to want to see. Like I'm already sick of all of AI's little smooth edges and weird little quirks that when I first saw it, I thought, oh, this is kind of interesting. This is kind of weird. And now it's just like... It's terrible. It's you can spot, you pants, can spot you know? it a mile away now. I, but I, you don't think that that's early? Like, I don't want to. I, I I agree with everything you're saying, but at the same time, don't you think there it's going to get more sophisticated and more? Um, I think it's getting worse that way. Mm. It's ca- it calls attention to itself in a way that it, it just almost reeks of AI, and that is starting to get worse, in my opinion. That was a mm-hmm. sort of a bell shaped curve, I think, and. Um, I think yeah, I, 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 I don't like think it at all. it'll be able you'll be able to type in Mo Willems you know draw like like don't let the pigeon drive the bus I, I mm-hmm. and some of his other titles like in that that really like Sharpie style I, I disagree because how I, how I see it going is it's it tends to lean towards photographic realism mm-hmm. for now at least at least, I know, I know, look, I know. Look, look, but like, look, here's why I say that. Five years ago, we weren't talking about AI at all. Give it five more years. It's scary. I don't want. I don't want it to. I don't want that to be true. 
Well, but here's the pro- here's the reason that I d- that I think it's true. I I, I see where where you're coming from. But the reason that I think you're wrong is that the people who want it to simplify and make artistic marks is going to be such the minority because think about the average person. They want to enter in a, some keywords and then they're so impressed that it looks like quote unquote reality. Think about mm-hmm. the comments you get when you show the average person a drawing or painting. The closer to reality it, it is, the more they tend to sort of like it or they're True. impressed by it. True. So if you've got the dominant group of people pushing the software that way, it's learning to reinforce that direction. So it's not if, if it was having a ton of people saying, hey, give me a, a landscape painting that looks like Nathan Folks, then it would start to drive that way. But that is the, you know, the infinitesimally small group of people doing mm-hmm. that i don't know i see i see the robots that boston dynamics puts out and every year they they put out another video and they just get better and better and better yeah, I, I hear what better, you're saying been... about the i hear what you're saying about the the kitschy um aesthetic that the general person has but i think that there'll be artists that will use it i don't know i just it's like look at the programs that you're using to do digital watercolor they're getting better they're getting better because the whole audience is leaning it a certain way to get better in the way that facilitates it being more like watercolor that's why your argument's wrong this won't age well for one of us that's for sure here here's the reason i say it is because it's already gone in a bell-shaped curve that uh the older versions in my opinion of mid journey. I've never been able to get mid journey to do what I want. I was kind of lamenting that with Jake, um, Mm -hmm. the other day, but, but the stuff I'm getting now is even worse than before because it's going so real. It almost looks like a film still. Mm. Yeah, but you can also get it. You could, there's ways, there's ways. And, and all someone has to do is take a, an AI, course you know a one hour here's how to do ai course and then people who use ai are too lazy to take a one hour course (laughs) (laughs) so so i want to hear in the comments on youtube on our youtube channel which is uh, school of visual storytelling what you think do you think that you know lee's right or do you think i'm right again Mm -hmm. and whoever ends up being right gets a sandwich I'll take a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's wrap it up there. <laughs> on, that, on that note. <laughs> if you made it that far, post the sandwich emoji. I don't even know there is one. It, do we have a sandwich icon? I didn't, I've never mm-hmm. used that. <laughs> they should so, be one for going and making sandwiches. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check right now. Okay, or, go ahead. you got to text take someone. Us, take us out. It could All be right. a cookie they, emoji. They, Thank you for joining us, everybody. Three Point Perspective is made possible by SBS Learn, where becoming a great illustrator starts. Your hosts are Will Terry, Lee White, and Jake Parker. You can find us on Instagram. And, uh, oh, Lee just texted me the sandwich emoji. It is a beautiful emoji. That is a really nice emoji. (laughs) Made me hungry. hungry. Yeah. (laughs) Podcast produced by Daniel Tu. That's danieltu.co. Special thanks to our keeper of the curriculum, Austin Shirtliff, our show notes wrangler, Lily Howell, and our chief operations officer, Lisa Fott. Now, go draw something.